killed so many people. Your ledgers must be dripping, just gushing red. I couldn't be more proud of you. <laughs> Priorities. Honey, we're home. Alexei is corny enough that it could be a joke, but between him and Yelena, it seems like he sincerely thinks of them all as family and is straight up dad pumped to have everyone back together, and it's pretty dang wholesome. Family back together again. Ah, you can see that face mask tech they use later. I know it's played for laughs, but big props to David Harbour for bringing a smoking badass dad bod to the I eat one avocado a day and have 17 personal trainers world of Marvel movies. And owning it like a boss. Gotta respect it. I mean, also David Harbour's workout routine. You're just as beautiful and as supple as the day they staged our marriage. <laughs> now we're flirting, but I have a lot of energy. <laughs> Please don't do that. Here's what's gonna I happen. don't want any food. Eat a little something, you hey. lady. Ooh. You're gonna tell us the location of the Red Room. They're all either former or current assassin spies who pretended to be a family for years and in many ways hate each other, but this is still less awkward than most families' Thanksgivings. It was real to me. You are my mother. You were my real mother. Well, there goes my tough guy assassin exterior. The Have I mentioned Florence Pugh is the best? The best part of my life was fake. We often forget that three years is a significant portion of a child's life. As adults, three years isn't even enough time to call your job a career. Some people still have boxes to unpack after living in a house for three years, but to a six-year-old, three years is literally half their life. Imagine if someone told you at 24 that the last 12 years of your life were fake. So of course, Yelena is the most impacted. And like I said in the beginning, look at this life. Who wouldn't want to believe Believe this is real, especially when all that came after was the smell of teen spirit. You were selected by a program that assessed the genetic potential in infants. So, les enfants terribles? I knew all the presents under the tree were just empty boxes, but I didn't care. I wanted to open every single one. But even for Nat, three years is almost a third of her 10 year old's life, and that's not even taken into consideration that most people don't make long term memories for the first two years. Um, you were just born in a cage, but that's not your fault. <laughs> Simple little sound that says so much about how she's astonished with who Nat has become. Tell me, how did you keep your heart? Pain only makes us stronger. I'm gonna be honest, I'm a little annoyed Nat doesn't mention the real family she was a part of for over a decade, but I get that she's got to credit Melina since she did technically make it clear what she wanted Nat to do. Never let her take your heart. I'm sorry I were the alert at the Red Room and I'll be here any minute. Typical Iron Maiden, Iron Maidening. My father would say Please to me. Please stop talking. Please, please wait, no, please, please wait, please. There is a reason why I'm telling you this, okay? Trust me. He go toilet on my hands. Oh my God. <laughs> Urine is oh 35 God. degrees Celsius. <laughs> I love how absolutely deadpan sincere Alexei is at wanting to tell this story, and then his big conclusion is... Fathers. Fathers. Mm. He's just a simple, sweet guy. Although, at the same time, I don't know, Alexi, gaslighting Danny seems like a bad idea. Just ask Christian about the bear. The only thing you care about are your stupid glory days is the Crimson Dynamo, and no one wants to hear about it. When you look at the list of Russian men who've been the Crimson Dynamo, you understand why she got confused. When I read about his widowed bride, Something touched me deep inside. In Soviet Russia, American pie is you. Ah, still not sure I'm making Yakov proud here. Maybe it's the spotlight, or maybe it's the way he takes those darts like a champ, but that is a beautiful beard. Hey, now the masks are gone. I'm sorry. Huh, because Nat really doesn't like hurting her sister anymore. Red room, red room, red room! <laughs> is, that, is that doing anything for anyone? What's the Venn diagram of the Shining and Black Widow fans look like? Moordor, am I right? Seems like Melina slash Nat is breathing nervously here, which works both since it's really Nat, and that Melina could be just nervous to be around Drakov when it's definitely clear to him that she just reconnected with her family. Plus, Drakov has a personal space issue. This is a much less cool way to die. <laughs> Again, priorities. Anyone else have a split second where you were hoping it was actually Ethan Hunt? Very down for that crossover. What? <laughs> Appropriate reaction. I'm having trouble hearing you, but Natasha, there's something I need you to know. I gave my life for a cause. You I don't. thought I was being brave. You, you don't have earpiece. David Harbour is nailing it. I fully support giving him another shot at Hellboy. What? You did it with Suicide Squad? Whatever, bring it, Boyke, but actually don't. No, I'm exhausted. Say hello. If you're paying attention to the gas list, you probably figured this out by now, but if you didn't, you're all, what? Is a safe deal? Smelling my pheromones that prevents you from committing violence against me. Genuinely intriguing bad guy power. Kind of creepy too. Any power that involves smelling pheromones feels creepy. Like when Wolverine knows that Cyclops is around, exactly what part of Scott is he smelling? Is it the lasers? It's the lasers. Melina, this is the last time that we 
them. <laughs> this poor guy can't have any sentimental moments. And just before Greg Bean was about to get a shot at Camille. Those names are too obscure for that movie, aren't they? Well, here's a hint. That version of David Harbour hates communism, and Olga Kurylenko is trying to avenge her father. Ugh, that was disgusting. Might as well get used to it, Yelena. I don't think Nat's going to be doing it anytime soon. Eh, unless she wins the lawsuit, I guess. Damn it, you're weak. Weak. But it's easier to be tough in front of defenseless little girls, huh? You should try laughing real creepy-like. That works for people pretending to be other people sometimes. Yo! And is that Bucky's move? Thank you for your cooperation. Got me. Just like she got Loki that one time and the other time on that other ship in the sky. I'll have to finish it myself. <laughs> what are you going to do? Even more commitment. All the commitment is so gross. Using the only natural resource that the, the world has too much of. Girls. Yike. All I can say is yike, Harvey Weinstein, in your wood-paneled studio executive's office. And look, obviously we all saw the sex trafficking parallels, but it's just occurring to me that Drakov has literal impenetrable armor. He's untouchable, you could say. And he holds Nat's and all the lives of the young girls that work for him in his hands. And then Nat frees herself by breaking her nose and disfiguring herself. You get where I'm going with this? It's by no means a perfect one-to-one, -one, but I can't be the only one who's wondering what Drakov's next movie is so I can boycott it, right? Slight change of plan. I completely demolished one of the engines and we are going into a controlled crack. <laughs> cool headedness. In Soviet Russia, Taskmasters, you nailed it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. She's just a straight up maneuver thief. Yeah, I know it's her thing, but that's flair. It ain't tactical. Although, maybe Nat's the original maneuver thief. Would make sense that she learned it from her mom. But now Nat proves why she's not just a widow, she's an Avenger. She should not be able to hold her own for so long. Ooh, brutal. Team work. Take out in three, ready? <laughs> she didn't even say one, because Nat would expect the fake out on one, so she just did it on zero. It's, it's an escalation of the normal. I'm over explaining it, you get it, right? I'm at the hand. I mean, I wouldn't mind an apology. And then it's times like these that you remember that Nat isn't superpowered, but that it doesn't really matter because she's the best at everything. I love that this is just like a contingency they had training for. All right, so when the red room starts crashing, you're all gonna jump out and just start shooting at everything. Many of you will be hit with debris, but just don't stop shooting. You know, with those shield throwing skills, I'm starting to wonder if Alexi really did meet Cap at some point. Okay, okay, maybe he has a little ways to go still. <laughs> His glasses. And fun touch that Yelena is the one that kills Drakov this time, saving any possibility of more red being added to Nat's ledger. Sick beat drop. I don't love all of this score, like I wish Taskmaster got a better late motif, but this free fall section is perfect and thrilling. I just love this set piece, the near misses, I'm never not thrilled. What? <laughs> How is this so cool? I know we're supposed to be numb to this type of action, but dang it if I don't love it. Again with that move? Is Nat mimicking Taskmaster now? Saving that mass murderer who was just trying to murder you. Also, Nat changed up the move this time so Taskmaster couldn't copy it. Is he gone? That is dark. The first thing you ask when waking up after decades of mind control. Makes sense. We're both upside down. Both upside down. Aw, another one of their sister things. Sisters, they'll give you hope for humanity. Svani, my mom and Kaya sister. It was real to me too. I'm not crying, you're crying. No, I'm, I'm crying. Thank you. Hugging. Let's Let's Man, you think they're bickering now? Wait till one of them rings off the melting point of steel. Jokes aside, I love how the theme of family is wrapped up in so many different ways. All these assassins that led their own lives for decades came together and took care of each other because there isn't just one kind of family. And you can even be a part of multiple families, shown by Nat still mourning the Avengers. If it can work out with the four of us, you know, there may be some hope for the Avengers. But it took Yelena wearing her raw love on her sleeve to break down Nat's barriers. And then we get these lost girls coming together with Yelena, even bringing Antonia along because they have a family bond over what was taken from them and the trauma that they went through together. I love every second of it. Here comes the cavalry. We're closing in on the target, sir. Wait, Ross just let her go? Hey, Black Widow 2, the two weeks between the Red Room fight and this moment, totally on board.
Aw, she's even wearing the vest. Okay, well, if you're leaving, then I guess you should take this. And hot dog, she even keeps it in Infinity War. Well played. No, Nat, don't do it. Oh, well, screw you, Avengers. But I guess she does patch things up by, you know, saving the world. Blessed day, Selena. For real, I'm for real stoked for Valentina to actually be in one of these movies or shows. For real. One of my favorite moments from the movie is this blooper reel. Can I have my iPad? I'm keeping it. Oh. Okay. Well, Merry Christmas. <laughs> Maybe you'd like a shot at the man responsible for your sister's death. Oh man, they're bringing back the Red Skull! Oh right. Hawk guy. Is this movie a good send off to Nat? No! Make more! Give her a series! Shut up, I don't care! There are like two years between this and when Cap and Nat save Wanda and Viz in Infinity War. Plenty of stuff to do, yo! I'm kidding about it not being a good send-off, even if I do want more. We finally get Nat's real backstory and tying up all the loose ends is pretty satisfying. And boy was it fun! Seriously, a great time. I think the Red Room crashing scene is one of the most fun scenes in the MCU. That's a hot take, and I am a little MCU deprived at this point, but honestly, my only complaint about this is that it ends too quickly. I can't imagine what every second of it costs, so I get it. But it's such a high level of... epicosity. Nat being the only non-mind-controlled person to just jump without thinking twice is so Nat, and I love that she gets that, especially to save her sister. But honestly, most of the set pieces in this movie are fantastic and are laced with meaning. You can feel the rage between the sisters in Budapest. On the bridge, Nat realizes fairly quickly that she's not gonna win, so she thinks ahead and stashes the vials. Even the chase is just so over the top, you can't help but smile. Taskmaster just destroys the city. Like pretty much everyone else, I obviously wanted to see more of Taskmaster. Hopefully in the future we will. Other than that, sometimes both Harbor and Pew, who are by far the film's highlights, seem to delve into sketch comedy level accents. They're a lot of fun and they seem like they're having a great time, which is probably the point. But at times it feels like they're bordering on being Russian versions of the Swedish chef. Oh, this was exciting. But honestly, who cares? I love these characters. I'll take a David Harbour and Rachel Weisz Iron Maiden movie, or a Red Guardian Disney Plus show where he deals with the fact that totalitarian big C communism has fallen. So many fun stories there. I mean, he's not really a bad guy, at least not now. What's, what's he doing with his life? Don't you kind of want to see him being a neighborhood vigilante, getting a job at Trader Joe's and reading Mark Fisher's capitalist realism? I certainly would. This film sets up so many exciting possibilities. And look, I loved on Florence Pugh, and she is terrific in this movie, but we are nowhere without Scarlett Johansson. It's just something we take for granted at this point, it's like she transports from an alternate reality, the one where she's the mysterious human among gods and starts to expose her past and emotionality in new ways. It's another example of the phenomenon I always bring up where I know her and they know her and now we both know her and am I in the MCU? Because it feels like it. But I also can't help but feel like this film was a missed opportunity. The Black Widow character has always been fantastic. Despite that, the MCU has never utilized her fully. We knew her past haunted her, but that's about it. And while the clarity and perspective on the beloved character are welcome and appreciated, I can't help but feel a little bittersweet now that Scarlet's version is gone and probably isn't coming back. And that's even more reason why the timing was so unfortunate. Waiting until after Black Widow died in the MCU to put out this movie is one of Marvel's few real screw-ups. After Winter Soldier, Marvel knew that solid action spy thrillers could work in the MCU, so why wait so long? I look at Marvel Phase 3 and all I can think is, wow, was there really no room for Black Widow? Guardians of the Galaxy 2 was fantastic, but did it need to happen right then? Maybe it did, maybe it did. But uh, I'm still holding my breath for Adam Warlock to show up. Marvel waited until Captain Marvel to have their first female-centered film in the MCU when they could have just brought this absolute entertainment fest out at any point after Civil War. I mean, right after Civil War would have been awesome for obvious reasons. But this version with this cast probably could have only come out now. And I like it, and it doesn't mean this needs to be the end. So you apologize to ScarJo Disney and make some more content and you like it, okay? Okay. I already told you what next week is in part one, and if you didn't see the teaser frame, that means you didn't watch the ad. Hmm, that's fine, I still love you. And I'll see you all next week.